Remember the spirit of your parish community, the power of worshiping together, the warmth of friends new and old who share your faith. Join us for Mass this weekend. Visit archbelt.org to find a Catholic parish near you. Feel the joy. Good morning. A special welcome to our guests, either those of you who are with us in person or those joining us through our webcast. Just a brief explanation before we begin. We are beginning the liturgical year, of course, with the first Sunday of Advent. Throughout Advent, the choir will sing the antiphon for that week before the opening song, but the song will be announced and it leads, the antiphon leads directly into the opening song. Thank you. Our cathedral guides will be available in front of the church after Mass to answer any questions you may have or to give you a brief tour. All of today's songs are listed on the hymn boards, and the service music may be found on the insert inside the back cover of your hymnal. Today's readings begin at number 1090. Our second collection is for the Cathedral Preservation Trust. Our celebrant today is Archbishop William E. Lorry, assisted by Deacon Fritz Bauerschmidt. Our opening hymn will be number 504.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. On this first Sunday of Advent, this beginning of a new liturgical year, let us ask for the grace to begin anew our life in Christ by celebrating these sacred mysteries worthily. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. 
I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks for the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of the David. Let us go. for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us, Let us go, Let us go rejoicing to the house of Because of my brothers and friends, I will say peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, I will pray for your good. Let us A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
and grant us your salvation. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in the Lord Jesus, most of us pray the Our Father every day. And as we do, we can easily glide over the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God's kingdom, of course, will come whether or not we are ready and whether or not we want it to come. In the meantime, most of us, myself included, can sometimes be preoccupied with building kingdoms of our own. For example, careers or financial security or one's legacy. And even as we pray that God's will be done, we often do our best to ensure that our will, not God's will, wins the day or at least that God's will would conform to ours. During Mass, right after we pray the Our Father, the priest, speaking in the name of the congregation, tells the Lord that we are waiting in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's right. We are eagerly awaiting the end of the world and the second coming of Christ to judge the living and the dead. Really? Most of us try not to think about God's judgment on our lives. And most of us hope we will not be alive when the cataclysmic ending of the world takes place. 
On this first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new liturgical year, the Church offers us a vision of life in Christ that frees us to embrace the future. Not merely the future that is around the corner, but the absolute future, the future for which you and I were created, the future for which deep down you and I are longing. And what is that future? It's a life of unimaginable joy and contentment in God's presence as we are numbered among the saints and surrounded by the angels who sing God's praises everlastingly. But we hesitate. We are creatures of habit. We like what we know, and we know what we like. And besides all that, Christmas is coming. Isn't that what Advent is all about? Injecting a little dose of spirituality into the holidays? Well, actually, no. It's about a lot more than that. It's about preparing to celebrate the first coming of Christ in all its fullness so that we will, pre so that we will be prepared to embrace Christ with joy when he comes again in glory to judge the living and the dead. One of the things we solemnly profess to believe in Sunday after Sunday. And do today's scripture readings help us to do that? Well, yes, they do. Indeed, they do. Beginning with Isaiah's prophecy about Jerusalem. Isaiah paints a beautiful picture of Jerusalem, doesn't he? He calls it the mountain of the Lord, the highest of mountains, a place towards which all the nations of the earth will stream, a place of peace, a place where there is no more strife, war, violence, or death. What Isaiah is describing here is the new and eternal Jerusalem. He is speaking of the kingdom of God for which we pray, that place where we will experience sublime peace and joy. For unlike the world in which we live, God's kingdom will not be a mixture of good and evil, nor will the wicked dwell side by side with the righteous. No, in the new and heavenly Jerusalem, the kingdom for which we pray, we will gaze in love and amazement upon the God who loved us first. And our love for one another and our friendship with one another will never fail. In the world to come, not only will there be a new heavens and a new earth, but we too will be recreated, made new, made glorious, collectively and individually. That is why the Son of God came into the world to redeem us, to rescue us from sin, to recreate us in God's image and likeness, that image and likeness that sin obscures and disfigures. He came to make us ready, to make us fit, to participate in the love of God and neighbor that reigns in the house of the Lord, in the new and eternal Jerusalem. In a word, to love like God loves, to love like the saints and angels love. Only in Christ, who was our hope, could we sing today, this morning, our response to Isaiah's prophecy, let us go rejoicing.
to the house of the Lord. Both the reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans and Jesus' own words from Matthew's gospel call out to us to use our time and to use our freedom to prepare ourselves to enter the kingdom of God. To reiterate, the way we prepare for our particular judgment after our death and for the general judgment at the end of time is to cling to Christ, to open our hearts to the transforming grace of the Holy Spirit and to live as sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. This is how we should read St. Paul's letter addressed to us today from Romans, where he exhorts us to cast off the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, to have done with immorality and selfish gratification of every sort, and to have done with the quarreling and jealousy that is so much a part of our polarized culture. Instead, Paul tells us to put on the Lord Jesus, or as he says elsewhere, to be clothed in Christ, just as a newly baptized person is clothed in a white garment. For Christian morality is not just about following the rules. It's not just about staying in our lane. Christian morality is about the grace Jesus came to bring us, that grace which changes us, transforms us into a new creation so that even now, while we are on this earth, we can begin to love the way the saints love and to decide the way the saints decided and to bear witness to our faith the way the saints bore witness. Christian morality is not just about how we live. It has to do with who we are. God's sons and daughters on our way towards the kingdom. Sons and daughters preparing in hope for the direct gaze of God's love upon us. So what gets in the way of all that? What's the work that you and I have to do during Advent? Surely, we have to repent of our sins by which we have rebelled against God's will. This means making a good, unburdening confession of our sins sometime before Christmas. But along with making a good confession, you and I need to weed out from our hearts any tendency we may find there to camouflage our sins, to make them seem almost virtuous, to imagine that we can repent of our sins, well, some other time, not now, or simply to presume that God doesn't care about our sins. God does care about them precisely because he loves us. If in God's grace we overcome the dangers of procrastination and presumption, then we will find ourselves preparing assiduously to welcome anew at Christmas the birth of Christ and in welcoming Christ at his first coming we will be eager to welcome him at his second when he will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. May God bless us and keep us always in his love.
And now let us profess together our holy Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, some friendship with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ, let us beseech the Father for our needs and the needs of the church and the world. For the Church of God, as she awaits the day of Christ's return, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world that waits to know the peace of Christ's kingdom, when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, especially for Ukraine and for our own city of Baltimore, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose faith has grown cold and who have no spiritual home, for renewed love of Christ through the grace of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For work for laborers, bread for the hungry, joy for the sorrowful, and grace and salvation for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially Marco Panuccio, for whom this Mass is offered, and for those whose faith is known to God alone, that together with Mary our Queen and all the saints, they may behold the glory of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pour forth your Holy Spirit upon us, O Father, so that we may eagerly await Christ when he comes again at the end of time and that we might be filled with those good works that give you glory. We make this prayer through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing, There is a Longing, number 771, 771.
us free and bring us new Take us on the boat and freedom. Sushi, Yamarati, Dominates, and free and sign up. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the powers and hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is 692, 692, Christ be our light.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Awake, Awake, 512. Number 512, Wake Awake. Make this your time of spiritual renewal. Return to the faith that has always guided you, always uplifted you in challenging times. Join us for Mass this weekend. Visit archbalt.org to find a Catholic parish near you. Feel the joy.